インディアナユニバーシティステファン・シンス様よりご講演をいただきます。Welcome, Mr. Stephen s i m s s i m s Thank you.、Um, it's a pleasure and an honor to be here、uh, speaking with you today.、Um, when、um, Robert invited me to come and talk. I knew that I wanted to speak about something that I knew about. And as a manager,、uh, having become a manager,、um, the things that I know become less and less. But one thing that I do know something about is、uh, how we deployed Luster in Indiana and、uh, the things that we've done for our customers.、Um, and so I want to talk a little bit、uh, with you about what we've done,、uh, where we're at right now. And what we intend to do. So, greetings from Indiana、uh, and Indiana University on a good day. That's what、uh, the Bloomington campus looks like. Indiana is comprised of eight campuses.、Um, all eight have a、uh, $160 million a year budget. Now, this goes from、uh, printer paper. To、uh, consultants,、uh, and a small slice of that goes to HPC. So, when I started、uh, at Indiana、uh, in the 90s, we、uh, acquired an IBM machine,、uh, and that was the beginning of Indiana's、uh, journey with supercomputing. Um, and you know, scientists that were doing workflows,、uh, they would move stuff from their computer to resources.、Uh, we were、uh, early adopters of HPSS, so we would push things to tape archive.、Uh, we had the AVL, the Advanced Visualization Laboratory, so、uh, if people wanted to use a Viz resource, they would have to push that off. To the VIS resource.、Uh, all in all, people were moving data an awful lot, and it wasn't always that fast.、Um, it was a pain. And in 2005,、uh, we wrote a grant to the National Science Foundation、uh, proposing a centralized file system for Indiana,、um, one that would span、uh, two campuses. Separated by 80 kilometers.、Um, one that would permit、uh, both、uh, slow writing、uh, as well as fast writing. So,、uh, on one side we would have Ethernet and on the other side we would have v i r a n e t Things didn't work out quite that way, but we did get a $1.72 million grant.、Uh, at the time in 2006, Uh, we got half a petabyte of storage.、Uh, this was a partnership with Dell and DDN. We were implementing 10 gigabit interconnects at that time, and the grant provided for 10 gigabit interconnects out to laboratories. So、uh, we were mounting the file system、uh, in multiple locations.、Uh, We chose Luster, Luster because it was scalable. We knew that we could expand. We knew that we could、uh, have a large reservoir of, of data should we need it. We chose it because it was crazy fast、uh, for computation. And we chose it because we knew that we could scale up the number of clients that we had、uh, to many more、uh, than we had at that time. So, once we had covered the ground in Indiana,、um, we became participants in a project called the Terra Group, which was a project to,、uh, in the United States, sponsored by the National Science Foundation, to link supercomputing centers across the United States. At that time, there was no file system to unite those sites.、Uh, 
people were satisfied using Arsene to uh, make sure that what they had at one location was identical to what they had at another location. So we set about to see if, if Luster could expand his sphere of influence beyond Indiana. And in 2006, uh, we partnered with some folks at Oak Ridge National Laboratory and uh, we're doing 10 gigabit client tests and discovered that with a single client, um, we could push and pull quite a bit of data. We later expanded this so that uh, the file system was mounted in multiple locations across the United States. This was so successful that someone twisted my arm and said, hey, you know, you should try entering the bank with challenge this year. Uh, the challenge is to see if you can uh, saturate a single 10 gigabit link, which we more or less were doing with one client, uh, but we were just pushing ones and zeros. And uh, one computer science professor at Indiana said, Steve, any idiot can just push ones and zeros. Uh, but I just didn't want to be just any idiot, so we thought about uh, what could we do that would reflect how we intended to use this file system across distance. And so the idea was to take some of the applications that we use on a day-to-day -day basis at Indiana and run these across distance. Uh, for example, the acquisition of uh, chemistry instrument data from uh, the inorganic chemists at IU. Uh, we were working in partnership with Rochester Institute of Technology, uh, who were at that time archiving uh, the Sarvamula Granthas, which is uh, a sacred text, sacred Indian text, a part of, you know, a, I guess the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, we were also working with uh, the Technische Universität Dresden, the Technical University of Dresden. Uh, we had the file system mounted there in Dresden, Germany. Uh, and then we had the file system mounted at IU. Uh, we were doing life science application, if I recall it was Gromax. Uh, and a high energy physics simulation. So we decided that we were going to run all of these uh, using a small data capacitor which we had built on the supercomputing show floor, which was uh, in Reno, Nevada. This is a diagram of what we did. Over here is Reno, Nevada, and this is Indiana University. This was the Rochester Institute of Technology, and this was the Technical University of Dresden. So we implemented those five different workflows uh, using these resources. And at the end of the day, we were able to saturate the 10 gigabit link just using applications, computing across the distance, uh, I guess, a friend of mine at the Naval Research Laboratory refers to this as computing in place uh, without having to move your data from one place to another. We wanted this to be more than a demonstration because we wanted to implement this uh, on the TerraGrid. So we set up a file system which we called Data Capacitor WAN or DC WAN. Uh, the goal was to provide short-term uh, storage, you know, sort of scratch space for researchers that needed to harness disparate resources that were, you know, uh, across distance. So uh, we implemented a rudimentary UID mapping scheme, uh, which only ran on the MDS. Uh, so quotas didn't work with this. Uh, Again, we chose Data Direct uh, because of the success we had had with the data capacitor. Uh, I guess those were S2A9550s. 
a lovely controller. And this is an example of one of the workflows that we use uh, with DC Wing. Uh, Dr. Scott Michael was doing uh, a simulation of gas giant planets. His code read, ran best on shared memory machines. Now, Indiana did not have a shared memory machine at that time. So he got an allocation through the Terra grid so that he could run in Pittsburgh and at NCSA. And so he ran his code both locations. And I should say that running uh, locally at either site uh, and running across distance, in this case across 410 miles and 147 miles, in terms of performance, there was no difference. Um, simply because the code was writing infrequently. But it was uh, with the data capacitor when uh, we were able to keep all of that data in one location. He had a license, uh, licensed through uh, IU for a visualization product, so he was able to visualize that data as it was coming off of those machines. Uh, which was kind of cool because as the, the data were coming on, uh, he could determine whether he needed to uh, hit what, you know, his initial conditions were faulty somehow, so he could cancel the job early, saving uh, compute resources, uh, or whether uh, the results were encouraging and perhaps he could use the initial conditions that he had started with to submit other jobs. The second part of his workflow involved uh, using a cluster. Um, and at that time, uh, Mississippi State University, they were decommissioning the cluster. And they asked if we would be willing to let them try to mount the file system. Well, Scott Michael needed some resources. He needed some cycles more than we could provide at IU. So we mounted the file system at Mississippi State. And he was able to complete his work using their cluster. All the while, we were using uh, the HPSS tape archive uh, to push uh, the data that he generated as well as his output. So we had done all of this stuff with 10 gigabit. Um, but as you know in, in computing, uh, bigger, better, harder, faster is the phrase that pays. Um, our friends in Dresden, we're partnering with uh, Freiberg. And using data direct equipment, they set up a test bed with HP. And you can see here, the distance was 60 kilometers. So we had two luster file systems, one on each side. And we did some testing with Dresden. And you can see that uh, using this dedicated network, we were able to get 94.4% efficiency. But this isn't real life. Uh, this was a sort of hermetically sealed uh, case where we were doing one and only one thing. So a year later, uh, we decided to try a demo at SC11 uh, using 100 gigabit Ethernet connected Seattle to Indianapolis. Now this was interesting in that, uh, as you can see, not all of the gear matches. We had a brocade uh, in Seattle. Across the way we had Alcatel Lucent. Uh, in Chicago, uh, we terminated with the Juniper switch. And as you can see, well, first of all, we, this, this is the setup we had. Once again, Data Direct for kind of to loan us some gear. And again, we had two Lustre file systems cross-mounted. This was across about 2,000 miles. Now, unfortunately, and, and you'll see this, uh, we had a very limited amount of time uh, to uh, test the network. 
And as you can see, our performance versus the amount of time that we had decreased significantly. So by the time we were doing the IOR tests, we had two hours to try to tune the network. We got 52% efficiency. And what we discovered in the process was that the Juniper switch in Chicago was not truly 100 gigabit. It was 250 gigabit backlinks. Um, so that was entertaining. Um, we published a paper which uh, was presented at SC12 uh, containing our findings. So in 2012, uh, until recently, uh, we've been working on, or have worked on, uh, completing what we call a node map feature. As I mentioned before, we had a sort of rudimentary UID mapping feature, which only uh, worked on the MDS. Uh, now we have a complete node map feature, which allows you to do UID mapping across administrative domains. And quota works this time. In addition, uh, we've completed uh, a shared key feature which provides security uh, from endpoint to endpoint. Uh, this permits the uh, administrator to have a, a, a sort of quick and dirty way to uh, encrypt their connection. Both of these features are available in Lustre 210 right now. Uh, with the remainder of my talk, let me shift gears. Let me talk about what's going on right now at IU. In 2012, we deployed uh, the second data capacitor. Uh, it's using an SFA 12K. Uh, we're using this for both scratch space and for project storage. Uh, as you can imagine, we're constantly running out of space because um, people uh, want to park their data there. Uh, but you'll have that. This is using FDR and Finibank. We have uh, two Linux clusters, Karst and Carbonate, that are using it, as well as uh, Big Red 2 and 2 Plus, which are both Cray machines. It's currently running Lustre 2.5. Last year, we implemented a second data capacitor WAN machine. It's using an SFA 10K. This is the first time that we've implemented ZFS, which has been very exciting for us. Um, one of the things that we're doing, uh, containers for users. So we're, we're not dealing with the project quota. It's really sort of a hard stop. Uh, that way, uh, unruly researchers um, have, have the pool that they can play in, uh, and they can't get outside of it. And that's been very useful. For, uh, for everyone, actually. We have uh, a solid state file system, uh, which we call DC RAM. Uh, the OSSs as well as the MDS are solid state. This was a result of sort of uh, some MDS testing that we had done uh, as part of a grant from Intel. Thank you, Intel. Uh, The interesting story behind this is that we, we had a researcher who was consistently able to uh, saturate DC2. Um, and so we brought this particular file system into existence. Uh, and so uh, that's not the case anymore. We relegated him to a place that he can't saturate. I guess uh, I'd like to conclude with, with the project that we're working with DDN on right now. Uh, it's two file systems, Slate and Slate Condo. Uh, a total of 12 petabytes in size. It will run ZFS. Uh, it's going to run 210, probably 210.1. I think part of what's exciting for us about this is uh, you know, the possibility of, of using some of the ZFS features, uh, like compression, which we're using right now with DC Line 2. Um, for our uh, HIPAA friends, uh, the possibility exists that we could do uh, uh, 
encryption address. And with that, I'm going to stop. Uh, thanks to DDN for inviting me. Thanks to Intel for uh, their continued support. Thanks to my friends at uh, Dresden and uh, the teams at IU. I'm open for questions if there are any. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for your time.